welcome on the course of basic electronics. Uh, this is the sixth lecture on the topic uh, digital electronics. Today uh, we shall cover following topics. The first one is that we will continue logic gate implementation of uh, Boolean functions and the second topic which we will cover today is flip flops. Okay. So, in previous class I told you that uh, Boolean functions can be uh, implemented using logic gates uh, either by choosing and r combination or r and combination. Okay. There is an alternative way of implementing a logic function and uh, we use NAND NAND in place of and r. Okay. In place of and r combination. we use NAND NAND and similarly uh, for R and combination we can also use NOR NOR combinations. Okay. So, I will tell you how to how this NAND NAND combination is equivalent to this AND R combination and similarly NOR NOR is equivalent to R and combination. Okay. You are familiar, familiar with a logic uh, different kind of logic gates, you know about the AND gate, okay, NAND gate. So, let us say that we have a 3 input NAND gate, for NAND gate we have uh, this symbol. So, if I uh, take 3 inputs x, y and z and the output is f, okay. then you know that f can be written as x, y, z complement prime okay. or I can also write it x prime plus y prime plus z prime using De Morgan law, is it or not. Okay. So, in and uh, just uh, look at the another uh, combination, uh, here I have inverter first and then the inverter output is given to the R gates. Okay. I consider an R gate here and the inputs are inverted first and then it is given to the R gate and the 3 inputs were again x, y, z. Okay. So, you can see that in this case the function is again equal to x bar plus y bar plus z bar. Okay. Getting this point, what we have done here? We have uh, first implemented x by passing through an inverter and then that output, inverted output is applied to this R gate and this is done for both y and z. So, x is basically x plus here, this is an R operation for x, x bar, y bar and z bar. So, that is why we get here f equal to x bar, y bar, z bar. Okay. So, what we see that this invert r is performing the same operation as this and gate is performing, nand gate is performing. Okay. Is it clear? And similarly, you can see uh, with the nor gate For a NOR gate, you know, if I again take uh, 3 inputs NOR gate and these 3 inputs are if x, y and z, then f in this case is f equal to x plus y plus z complement and that is equivalent to basically x bar, y bar, z bar by De Morgan law. Okay. So, in place of uh, performing this NOR operation, if I perform invert AND operation, I will also get, I will again get the same function at the output. Okay. So, uh, just look at this, the AND gate and the inputs are actually inverted here. The 3 inputs 
x, y and z are inverted. So, here the output f is can be written as x bar, y bar, z bar. It is an AND gate, okay. but all the inputs are inverted before those are applied to the AND gate. So, x bar, y bar, z bar, here I get f equal to x bar, y bar, z bar. Okay. Is it clear? So, you see this NAND gate is equivalent to invert R function and similarly the NAR gate is equivalent to this uh, invert AND function. Okay. Is it clear? Now, uh, let us take the same function which we implemented in the previous class. That was two input, uh, three input function f, let us say that it is f equal to a b. Basically, uh, this function has uh, a b c d plus c. There were four uh, variables, those were a, b, c, d and the function which was written in uh, product of some form was this f equal to a, b, c, d and a. Okay. And the implementation of this function was like this, we implemented it using AND and R gates. So, in first state, first stage there were two AND gates. And those, uh, the, this first AND gate was receiving the input A and B. The second gate is was receiving C and D. And uh, there was another input that was E. And finally, we perform the R operation here. Okay. So, this function f was actually a b plus c d plus c. Okay. Now, what I do? I just put two inverter, one, one here at the output of this AND gate and another inverter at the input of this R gate. Okay. If I put two inverter, that means whatever appear here, first it is inverted by this inverter okay. and then that will be again written, that variable will again be written in its original form because of this inverter. Okay. I mean there is no difference between this circuit and the previous one, because the two inverters now put the things in original form. Okay. The first output if it is inverted here, that means if it is written a b bar here. Okay. So, a b bar will again be inverted here that becomes simply a b. And similarly, the c d bar which appears here that will be inverted here. So, c d is the input for this R gate. And similarly, e bar that will be inverted here. So, that becomes e. So, this R gate has uh, three inputs a b, c d and e. So, finally, we get here f equal to a b plus c d plus c. Okay. And you know that these are NAND, this, these are now, uh, the, the, uh, this uh, gate is actually now NAND gate and this can be written as, what about this? Invert R, that is equivalent to a NAND gate. Okay. So, I can remove this invert R function and simply I can apply these three outputs to a NAND gate and what I get? I will get the same perform, uh, same uh, performance as I was getting from AND R combination. Okay. A NAND NAND two stage NAND NAND gate, two, two stage uh, NAND NAND implementation do the same function as two stage AND R was doing. Okay. And similarly, we can do, uh, we can uh, use two stage NAR NAR function, two stage NAR in place of
in place of R and combination. Okay. R and combination as you know uh, can be used to implement a Boolean function in uh, product, uh, sum of product form. Okay. So, first stage is uh, implemented by R gates, next stage is by AND gate. So, I can replace both R and AND gates by NOR gates. Okay. So, the two stage NOR gate is equivalent to the simply R and AND gate and this sequence can be used to implement Boolean function in product of some form. Okay. Is it clear? I am not going to repeat uh, the same problem here, but it is very much obvious. Okay. Now, before uh, moving to the next topic on flip flop, I would like to give you a few comments on uh, the K map. Okay. The one point is if uh, you know that. Uh, the output of K map, I mean the minimized function, simplified function is basically appears in product of sum form, okay, sorry, sum of product form because we deal with mean terms uh, in K map, okay. but sometime you may be asked to write the output, I mean the simplified function in product of sum form, then what you will do? For example, just uh, take a function f which was which is to be uh, simplified f x y z and if it is defined like this let us say that it is 1 3 5 7. Okay. So, if you uh, directly simplify this function using k map what you will find? You will find the simplified function in sum of product forms, okay. but the question is write the simplified function in product of some form. Okay. So, what should I do? What I will do? I will just simply find out the 0 in the k map, I mean 0 which are there in the k map make a suitable group. Okay. All those 0 indicates basically f complement. Okay. Let me do this exercise. If I write a k map for uh, this given Boolean function x, y, z, zero one, zero zero, zero one, one zero, one one. So what I will do? I let me write. Sorry, one one and one zero. One is here. Then three. 5 and 7. Okay. So, others are basically 0, this is 0, this one 0, this is 0 and this one is 0. Okay. So, if I just uh, make a group of these 4 ones, I will uh, get a simplified function for this f, okay. but I have to write f in term of, I mean in form of product of sum. Okay. So, what I will do? I will make a group of zeros. If I make a group of zeros, that will gives us the f complement. Okay. 0 means the mean terms which are not present here. Okay. I am taking the complement of this, uh, the mean terms which are given here. Okay. So, if I make a group of all the 0 and simplify this function, that gives us f dash. Okay. And basically this f dash will appear in uh, product of uh, uh, product uh, sum of product form. Okay. So, to when I just again take the complement of this f, the final expression will be in uh, product of sum form. Okay. Getting this point? Rather than making the group of 1, you can also make the group of zeros. Okay, the mean terms which are not given, okay, that will give you the f complement and after taking the complement of this f complement, you again get f, but now 
the output will appear in product of some form. Okay. So, these, these, this is, these are the sequences uh, if you are asked to write simplify a function in product of some form. Okay. Now, uh, we shall move to uh, the next topic on flip flops, okay. but before uh, discussing flip flops in detail, uh, let me tell you that a digital circuit can be classified as a combinational circuit or sequential circuit. Okay. So, digital circuit circuits may be classified as combinational circuit. R as a sequential circuit. Okay. Combinational circuits are those where the output depends upon the input, present input only. Okay. That means, uh, for example, that half header circuit. Okay. In, ha in half header circuit, what you find that the sum was equal to x, x, r, y. Okay, and the carry was x, y. The x and y were two inputs and therefore, the two output sum and carry depends upon the two inputs. Okay. So, this is the combinational circuit. Output at the moment depends upon the input which are applied to that circuit, okay. only inputs. But the sequential circuits are those where the output depends upon the present input as well as the past output. Okay. For example, uh, let us say that if I have a counter, counter circuit, let us say that I have a uh, decimal counter. So, decimal counter is giving uh, the decimal output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. Okay. So, if I have counted at a particular moment 4, so the next output of that counter will be 5 and that 5 basically depends upon even the previous output that was 4. Okay. I cannot write 5 after 3, 5 is after 4, okay. just after 4. That means, here the output depends upon even the previous input. That is why this kind of circuit where the output is a function of not only input, but the previous output is called the sequential circuit. Okay. Sequential circuits can be further classified like uh, synchronous, synchronous sequential circuit and asynchronous sequential circuit. Sy synchronous can be further classified as clogged, synchronous, uh, clogged sy synchronous circuit and unclogged. clogged and unclogged, but I will not uh, go into the detail, but you should uh, just uh, note down here that uh, basically this uh, classification is based on the presence of clock or some sort of synchronizing, uh, synchronizing uh, uh, input. Okay. That means, uh, in synchronous circuit, the different operations which are taking place will have to be synchronized by a clock, whereas in asynchronous circuit, that clock is not necessary to be present. Okay. In a bigger circuit, there are many operations simultaneously taking place and you have to just synchronize or you want control on different operations. So, for that you basically need a clock. Okay. So, based on the presence of clock, they are further classified, but that we are not going to discuss in detail because here uh, we have to uh, cover the basic concept of flip flop only and then uh, we will discuss few application of the flip flop. So, uh, that is left for the some other courses like digital electronics. Okay. So, let me come back to the sequential circuit because 
the flip flops are somehow related with the sequential circuits. Okay, let me first draw the block diagram for a sequential circuit. The inputs for this given circuit are this, these are inputs and let us say that we have output here. outputs. So, this is actually combinational circuit. Okay. Only few inputs and in response to that in input combinations we will have the outputs. Okay. But if I take a feedback here using some sort of memory element and apply that output of memory element back to the input, it becomes a sequential circuit. Okay. You can note down here that the output now will depend not only on the input, but on the past output. The past is stored and applied back to the input, if applied back as a input for this combinational circuit. Okay. So, this block diagram, this uh, the whole block diagram is uh, basically known as sequential circuit. Okay. And that memory element may be a simple delay element like uh, uh, the internal delay of logic gates okay. or you can have a buffer, we have discussed about the buffer, buffers are just to produce some delay. So, that buffer can also be used as a memory element or we also use the flip flop latch or flip flop as a memory element. Okay. So, basically uh, in our discussion we will focus on this part only the latch and flip flop. Okay. So, we shall uh, talk about the different kind of uh, flip flops like SR flip flop, D flip flop, JK flip flop and T flip flop. And uh, later on, we will try to uh, build, uh, develop some application based on uh, the flip flops, which will be discussed here. Okay. So, as uh, uh, it is obvious here, as it appears that flip flop are basically a memory storage element, flip flop stores data. Okay. And flip flop, the basic of the flip, uh, basis of the flip flop is basically a SR latch all flip flops will have this element common that is called SR latch. So, let us discuss first about this SR latch. Okay. SR latch can be constructed using NAND gate or NOR gates, okay. two NAND gate or two NOR gates. So, for uh, two NAND gate, uh, let me implement the two NOR gate SR latch that will be like this. We will have two NOR gate one and two. This is our uh, set input reset input, the output here is q, this output is q bar and the output of this uh, NAR gate number 1 is given back to the NAR gate number 2 and similarly, the output of this NAR gate 2 is given back to that of NAR gate 1. Okay. Is it clear? So, it is obvious here there are two output for uh, this uh, basic SR latch, those two outputs are called Q and Q bar. That means, simultaneously we will have a data is stored and the complement of that is also stored. Okay. If I if the Q is 1, 
then q bar has to be 0 and if the q 0, if the 0 is the output here, then q bar will uh, provide us simultaneously 1. Okay. So, if we get this sequence for q and q bar, if we have q 1, q bar 0, then it is said that the latch is in set state, set state. Okay. And if I have q as a 0 and q bar 1, then basically it is called clear state or 0 state, set state or 1 state and similarly clear state or 0 state. Okay. And uh, you will see that because of that reason only uh, the two inputs are called set input and reset input. S yes, stand for set input, this is set input that is why I call it S and this is the reset input or clear input that is why I call it R. Okay. And uh, definitely it is not a combinational circuit, if you go, if you uh, look at this circuit carefully what you will see that the input you can say the input for this SR latch is function of inputs as well as the previous outputs because we have taken feedback from output and have given back to the input, given back as a input to this circuit. Okay. So, let us see how uh, this uh, flip flop stores a data, okay. how it, this flip flop stores a bit. Okay. Please note here that this flip flop is uh, to store a single bit okay. and if you have to store more number of bit, you need more number of flip flops. Okay. So, this has to store a single bit that may be 1 or 0 and uh, the state like this set, if the flip flop is in set state, if the output are 1 and 0, it is said that the data 1 is stored and if uh, it is in clear state like 0 1, it will be said that the data 0 is stored in this flip flop. Okay. And now let us uh, see how actually it works. Okay. Please note here that for this kind of flip flop, the usual input is 0 0. If I mean usually if it is not being used, then the set input and reset input should be 0 0. Okay. And before uh, discussing the working principle for this SR latch, uh, we should uh, just recall the important property of, uh, we should recall the truth table for the NOR gate because we are using NOR gate here. Okay. For NOR gate you know that if the, there are two inputs x, y and output is let us say that f, then the four combination 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, this 0 plus 0 will give us 1, 0, 0 and 0. Is it correct? So, what you notice from this truth table that if there is a single 1, if there is a 1 present in the input, your output has to be 0. Okay. If there is any one present in the input, either as a x or y, your output has to be zero. Okay, so just recall this concept and let's see what happens in this case. Okay, as I told you that originally both flip flops are, I mean both inputs remain in zero zero state. Okay, but from uh, let's say that from this zero zero state if the S input changes from 0 to 1 and R remains as it is. Okay. Then let us see what will happen. If what I have done, I have set this input to 1 and this R input reset input to 0. Okay. What will happen in this case? So, since this NAR gate 2 receives 1 as a input, its output has to be 0, is it or not? because of the you can look this from the this truth table property if there is any if one is present in the input the output has to be zero 
Okay. So, if I if this receives 1 as a input then you will see that this q dash has to be 0. Okay. And if this q dash is 0 then this 0 is feedback given input to this uh, NAR gate number 1. So, this will receive I mean this will have the 2 inputs and both are 0 0 now. Okay. Because 0 is already given as a input to this one uh, to this uh, NAR gate number 1 and another input we receive from here that is also 0 now. So, since we are uh, we are having 2 inputs for this NAR gate and both are 0 0 as per truth table the output should be 1. Okay. So, what we will have here we will here we will have q as a 1 and q bar as a 0 this is called set state. Okay. If the output is present q is 1, q bar is 0, it is said that this SR latch is in set state. Okay. And then, so here uh, let me write the state for q and q bar, q and q bar. So, if the set input is 1, reset is 0, then q becomes 1 and q bar becomes 0. Okay. And then uh, just uh, look at uh, this table, what I say that now this 1 has become 0. Okay. That means now the input sequence has become 0, 0. Then what will happen? Let us see. The input is now 0, one, from 1, 0 to it is shift, uh, the inputs have been shifted to 0, 0. So, what will happen in this case? The S input has to be has become 0 now here. Okay. So, how this uh, this will behave now? Because the previous output was 1, Q was 1. So, this flip flop S uh, I mean this uh, this NAR gate is having 1 input which is 1. Okay. 1 input of this flip flop number uh, this NAR gate 2 is 1 and therefore, the output here is to be 0. Okay. And if output is 0, then th there is a similar condition for the NAR gate number 1, both inputs are 0 okay. and it will remain at 1 stage as it was in the previous case. Okay. So, what you see that even the S input has come back to 0 from 1 to 0, its output is not changing, it is remain still to be 1 and 0, q is 1, 0 is 0. This is called the memory state for this SR latch. Memory state. Okay. When 1 0 was given, set was 1, reset was 0, output was 1, q was 1, q bar was 0. But when uh, from this combination, let us say that set uh, reset input remain as it is, set input moves from 1 to 0, the output is still remains as 1 0. Okay. So, this is the characteristics of a memory. You see that the data which was given to this uh, flip flop uh, latch has been stored. Okay. Is it clear? And similarly, you can do uh, for 1 0 state, uh, 0 1 state. Let us say that the given data, the sequence is 0 1, that means set input is at 0 and reset input at 1, then see what will happen. If the set input is at 0 and reset in input is at 1, so if the reset input is at 1, the q has to be 0, is it or not? Because of the property of uh, that NAR gate, because NAR gate is having 1 as a input. So, this has to be 0 and uh, if this is 0, then this 0 is coming here as a input and this NAR gate is receiving both, I mean both inputs as a 0, therefore the output becomes 1 here, q bar is 1. So, if the given sequence for if the given input sequence is 0, 0, 0 for set and 1 for reset, 
then the output simply becomes 0 1 ok. And now uh, let us say that this reset input which was originally 1 has come back to 0 and set is initially uh, it was 0 again it is 0 then now let us see what will happen it will again remain in the same condition that is in 0 1 condition. So, again this is a memory condition ok. The data which was stored previously remains as it is ok. Even uh, when the set inputs come from 1 to 0 or the reset input moves from 1 to 0 ok. But what will happen to 1 1 state if both inputs are 1? If the both inputs are 1, if the both set and reset are 1, then what will happen to q and q bar? Both will be 0. But since this 0 0 is uh, uh, actually not desirable for this flip flop, ok. So, we will design the circuit in such a way that those states will be discarded. I mean it's, it will be put in a do not care condition, it is, of, it is not of our use, ok. So, I can say here 1 1 to be not defined here for this case, not defined for this SR latch, ok. This 1 1 condition will never occur for this SR latch, ok. Is it clear? So, you see that this SR latch can also be implemented using NAND gate, just replace those NAR gates by NAND gate like this, we will have two NAND gates, but in this case there is a difference set input will be here, reset input is here this is our q output and q bar output will be here, feedback is again there as the it was in the previous case ok. The only difference is the difference in this case compared to the previous one that uh, the NAR gates has been uh, have been replaced by the NAND gate and the position of set and reset input has been changed ok. In previous case set input was here, reset was here ok. And please note that unlike uh, that of the previous case, this kind of uh, latch will be initially set in 1 1 condition ok. The previous latch was uh, to be set in 0 0 condition, but this one will be set in 1 1 condition ok. And uh, then we can verify about the uh, various state. Let us say that uh, the state 0 1 is given, I mean uh, the set input, reset input q and q bar. What I say that the set input is 0 and reset is 1 ok. So, please consider it like this as I told you that uh, the normal condition the normal inputs for uh, this flip flop is 1 1 ok. So, 1 1 means the set has come from 1 to 0 ok and reset is as it is ok. Now, investigate what will happen in this case because these are AND gate NAND gate and for NAND gate if there is any input to be 0 the output has to be 1, is it or not? If any input is 0, output has to be 1. So, what is 0 in this case? The set input is 0. So, set input means 0 for uh, this NAND gate since the input is 0, it output has to be 1, ok. And if it is 1, so the 1 is appearing here, reset was already at 1 state, so 1 1 means it will be 0. 
Okay. So, the output for this case is basically 1 0, please note that this is the set condition for this kind of SRLH which is built using the NAND gate. Okay. So, this is the set condition. You can compare this uh, from the previous case. In the previous case, when set was 1, reset was 0, it was the set state. But when your latch is implemented using NAND gate, the set 0, I mean if when the set G becomes 0, that will set this uh, latch into the set state, 1 0 state. Okay. And then you see that if the set has come back to 1 state and reset remains as it is 1, then what will happen? Now, initially the set was in one state, but now it has become, initially the set was 0, now it has come into the 1, 1 state. Okay. So, uh, since the initial output was 1, 0, here it was 1, 0. So, 0 was feedback given uh, to uh, this NAND gate number 1. Okay. So, here again you will see, since one input is 0, the output has to be 1. Okay, and this one and this reset one will make it 0. Okay. So, what you see even the set input has come from 0 to 1, the output remains as it is in set state 1 0. Okay. Outputs remain as it is as it was in uh, previously 1 0. This is called the memory for this latch. Okay. And similarly, we can also see for the reset state, for the reset the input state input is 1 as it is and reset has to be 0. Okay. You can think as if the initially it was 1 1 and from 1 1 the reset has changed from 1 to 0. Okay. So, since reset is has changed from 1 to 0, the output has to be 0 1 that means this latch will go into the reset condition okay and that you can verify here if the input set is 1 reset is 0 so reset 0 means this is to be 1 and since here we are having 2 1 1 and 1 this should be 0 so q is 0 q bar is 1 this is the reset condition or clear condition clear condition okay so 1 0 means this is 0 1 and we have clear condition or zero condition. Okay. And again, if uh, this reset comes back to one state from the zero, and if this state again remains as it is one, so both if even both are one one, but you will see that the outputs remains as it is zero one, and this is the memory state for this given latch. Okay. So, you can use either NAND gates or NAR gates to implement the SR latch. Okay. Now, using the same concept, let us discuss about the clogged SR flip flop. Clogged SR flip flop. I will tell you what is the difference between flip flop and latch. Both flip flop and latch can store a single digit, okay, single bit, but there is a difference. The difference is in triggering mechanism the control mechanism. The latch is basically triggered by level, level of the control signal, whereas the flip flop is triggered by leading and trailing edge of the control signal. That will I will discuss in detail later on. Okay. First, let me give you the circuit here for this clogged SR flip flop. So, that is uh, let me implement this using the NAR SR, NAR SR latch. 
So, this part is common similar to the previous one. The output is Q here, Q bar here. This is taken here as a feedback, okay, and this one is again taken as a feedback. So, up to this, it is similar to the previous given circuit, okay. Here, some modification will come. I will use two AND gates here, one AND gate is here, another one AND gate is here. And the one input is the reset input as we had previous, previously, another one is set input here and apart from this set and reset input, we have a clock pulse here. Okay. The difference is uh, we have uh, uses two more AND gates here apart and additionally we have this clock pulse, another input we have brought in here that is a kind of control input. Okay. So, when I say clock pulse in digital electronic, you should think about a square wave like this. Okay. And basically, its duty cycle is 50, duty cycle means if the time period, total time period is T and uh, this on period is let us say that T by 2, off period is T by 2, then its duty cycle is basically defined as the on period divided by the total time period T. So, it is 50 percent basically for a square wave. Okay. That means, on time is equal to off time. So, clock means uh, a waveform something like this. Okay. And if we are dealing with a latch, so latch means you see that in previous case there was a problem. The both input S and R, we do not have any control over that. Okay. Those uh, that uh, SR latch may uh, receive input intentionally or there may be some unintentional change at the inputs and that unintentional change will lead to the new output that was not actually desired. Okay. So, the idea was just to control, I mean uh, the presence of control the operation of that SR latch using this control input. Just look in this case what will happen since we have two AND gate here okay. and until I make this clock pulse 0, okay, until this pulse is 0, what will happen? Here at both inputs I will have 0, 0, is it or not? So, even an input is present here or here, if the clock pulse is 0, those inputs are not allowed to move into this SR latch. Okay. So, if those inputs were intentional and sorry non-intentional, unintentional, then basically that will be blocked by this clock pulse because we are not giving clock pulse because those inputs were not uh, actually necessary at all. Okay, those were undesired inputs. So, since clock pulse is 0, those two inputs, unintentional inputs will not move into the flip flop and the operation output will not be affected. Okay. Okay, is it clear? So, uh, as I was telling you that this uh, clock pulse you see here may be something like this, a square wave. Okay. So, if this circuit responds to only this period, I mean this level, high level to the clock pulse, it is said as a latch. Okay. It is said as a latch because it uh, responds to the enable input. You see, we, it responds to the clock pulse and uh, basically it, it responds to the high level of the clock pulse and that is why it is called the level triggered, level triggered. If there is a level triggering for uh, the given latch circuit, it is called the latch, uh, for, uh, if, if it is level triggering for the latch, it is called the latch. If there is a S triggering, that means if uh, 
the transition is recognized from 0 to 1 or from here 0 to 1 or from 0 to 1 for the clock pulse, then it is called flip flop. This is triggering from 0 to 1 or we can also utilize this transition from 1 to 0, 1 to 0 or 1 to 0, okay. then basically it becomes a flip flop. If our circuit is designed in such a way that the trans clock transition from 0 to 1 is detected okay, by the circuit, then it is called flip flop. Okay. If the level of the control signal is basically uh, changing the state or uh, controlling the behavior of this circuit, the circuit is called a latch. Okay. So, it is the nature, uh, nature of this which will decide whether it is flip flop or a latch. Okay. Getting this point. Generally, uh, sometimes we call latch in loose sense we call flip flop as a latch or latch as a flip flop, but the difference is this. The latch is S triggered of the control in uh, the latch is the level triggered and the flip flops are basically S triggered like this. Okay. Getting my point? That means, let us say that if some input is present here 0 1, okay, initially the clock was 0. So, this R and 0, 0 and 1 are not allowed to pass to the next stage because of this 0 clock, okay. but when I will apply a clock and clock is moving from 0 to 1 from low state to high state. So, during that movement only this R and 0 and 1 will be transferred to the next state. That movement of the clock from 0 to 1 state will be actually detected by this circuit. Okay. Then it becomes a flip flop, it is called a flip flop. Okay. And if the clock has reached to its maximum level okay and that maximum and once it has reached to the maximum level then only this 0 and 1 is transferred to the next state it will be called as a latch okay so generally to uh, distinguish latch with flip flop we say that the clock pulse for the flip flop and enable for the latch okay we say that if the input is the control input is enable then it is latch and if it is a clock pulse like this, then it is called a flip flop. Okay. Is it clear? So, let us stop here today.